Hi guys, so I'm going to try and uh, kind of compile Maxwell's equations for you in, in this short video. And the purpose of this is kind of two, two parts. I mean, this is one of the main results, kind of things that we've been building towards in the course. And then this will also be um, a, an ingredient for talking about uh, electromagnetic waves. So, okay, so we need to uh, fill in a couple uh, missing pieces. So most recently, we've been talking about Faraday's law. So and we've tended to talk about it in terms of an EMF. So as a changing magnetic flux causes uh, an EMF, a voltage. And the uh, thing that I want to add to this is we want to express this in terms of the electric field instead of the voltage. And you know that the connection between uh, electric potential and electric field is that the potential is the integral of the electric field. So for the purposes of this, we can rewrite Faraday's law like this. So what this is telling us is uh, up to now, we've been talking about this in terms of magnetic flux. But another way to think about this is that a changing, a time varying magnetic flux causes uh, uh, an electric field around a closed surface. So this is the more uh, uh, complete, maybe more correct uh, way, general way of, of um, expressing Faraday's law. And we want this in terms of electric field because it's going to be uh, what we're going to use uh, when we're putting all of our Maxwell's equations together. So this is sort of the more general expression um, Faraday's law. So that's one detail, and this is basically, uh, you know, in chapter 20, it's at the, it appears right at the end of um, chapter 29. Um, so, and then we're going to start getting into, uh, so this is sort of end of chapter 29. Chapter 30, as you know, talks about inductance. So uh, we're going to kind of, we, we will work a little bit in that chapter, but most of our, the, our remaining attention will be in chapter 31, where we talk about Maxwell's equations and electromagnetic waves. So the first thing that we that we want to look at in chapter uh, in chapter 31 is in the first section, and this is uh, we need to address sort of a hole in our description of Ampere's law. So recall Ampere's law. This was a tool that we used to calculate magnetic fields. So remember, looks like line integral of B uh, dot DL uh, looks like a constant, the permeability of free space mu naught, times the current enclosed. And we use this, you know, remember to talk about like you have a wire and you have a current going through it, and we could. Uh, determine the, you know, the, the, the B field around the wire. And for this purpose, uh, you know, in this case, B and DL would be pointed in the same direction. And, and if this is, you know, uh, symmetrical, then this becomes B times uh, the integral of DL around that uh, surface, and this is just the circumference of the circle, and so it looks like b times 2 pi r is mu naught. And we use this to find uh, the magnetic field around a wire as being mu naught i over 2 pi r. Um, so to kind of you know connect back to what we had done before, well. The issue with this 
is that there are circumstances where, uh, depending on how we draw the surface, there may or may not be a current. And so we have to resolve this contradiction. So let me show you, uh, let me paste in here a diagram to help us understand this. So here's our diagram. So up above uh, here, I was I was talking about, you know, uh, uh, my drawing's actually not very good. Let me sketch this again. You know, this is some um, some radius r. If we were to look at this uh, on the end view, you know, uh, and then we were calculating, you know, the the magnetic field around the wire. Well, consider this situation. So you have uh, this wire, and it's going to a parallel plate capacitor, and where the edge of this, uh, you know, we have, you can see here, it looks the same as what I drew above. Um, and so B dot DL is going to be the same. Now, the surface that we were just talking about was basically this one where the wire pierces the surface. Now, the issue is, what if instead, so that was S1, in other words, what if instead you define the surface as being uh, going in between the plates of this capacitor? If you do that, there is no current that flows through there. So in other words, there's no enclosed current. So this is zero. And now it's telling us that the magnetic field would be zero. And that is not correct. So we have to resolve this discrepancy. In order to resolve this, What we can do is consider the following. So uh, think back to uh, capacitors. You know, the capacitor stores some amount of charge for an applied voltage depending on its capacitance. Well, and for a parallel plate capacitor, uh, we know the capacitance looks like mu, uh, epsilon naught times the area divided by the distance between the plates. And we could write the voltage, again, as the integral. Uh, if it's constant E, the uh, E, the integrating the uh, electric field just becomes E times D when it's constant like that to get the voltage. So we could re-express CV as this. Now, this looks like uh, an electric field uh, times an area. Notice that the factor of D is going to cancel out here. So epsilon naught times E times A. Um, now, let's take a derivative on both sides of this. And what this will do is, remember, what is uh, DDT of Q but a current? And that current will equal, uh, so the area isn't changing. But uh, we, can, we can write this as uh, flux. So this would be an electric flux. And then notice the constant isn't going to change. So this would become epsilon naught times DDT of an electric flux, which is sort of familiar based on what we have been doing with Faraday's law. Now, now we have another uh, current. And let's uh, insert that current into Ampere's law. And this uh, resolves this issue, uh, this ambiguity of what surface that we choose. So this is the, uh, the fix that we needed to add uh, to uh, make Ampere's law complete. So uh, here we can write it. Let me just write it once more. The more correct and complete expression for Ampere's law has two pieces. It depends on mu naught times the uh, enclosed current, but it also depends on mu naught epsilon naught times the time derivative of the electric flux. So this is the more complete Ampere's law. Uh, 
Um, so that's basically section 31.1. Now, the next thing that we need to add to this picture to kind of fill out our Maxwell's equations is in the next section, 31.2. So, and this uh, is basically Gauss's law, but for magnetism. So recall um, Gauss's law. This is one of the first things that we looked at. Um, e dot dA is equal to Q enclosed or epsilon naught. And so the uh, the uh, surface integral of the electric flux is equal to the is proportional to the enclosed charge. Now, what we're going to do is do this for uh, magnetism. B dot dA, and this is actually a simpler expression because this will be equal to zero. This is Gauss's law for magnetism. And what this means uh, is that there is no such thing as a magnetic charge. So there are no magnetic charges. You cannot have one pole of a magnet, in other words. There are no monopoles. So, and just pictorially, uh, so when we were talking about electric charges, kind of the cartoon was, you know, you have a charge, it could be positive, it could be negative, but you could have a charge by itself. And then we, you know, you draw, uh, you enclose that in a surface and the flux that's coming through that surface is proportional to that charge. Now, the picture with uh, a magnetic, with magnetic uh, fields and magnetic flux is imagine you have a magnet now and, you know, you divide, you, uh, draw a surface to enclose that, there is no, uh, there is never going to be a net flux through that surface. So let me just draw the field lines here. Um, you know the field lines go from north to south. Um, and if you look and through that surface, you can see for, you know, anywhere that there's magnetic field lines exiting the surface, there's going to be magnetic field lines entering the surface. So in other words, when you integrate over that surface, the net flux is going to be zero. You, there is never going to be uh, a net flux. Um, and, you know, you could imagine, uh, uh, maybe another way to think about this is like, you could break, you know, you can try and break your magnet cut the um, North Pole off or something and try and, you know, capture that in a surface, but it's not going to work because you have now just created another South Pole to your magnet. So in this, I should have kept this in a different color here. Let me, let me just be draw this again just for contrast um, you know you could imagine breaking your magnet in half but what happens is you don't get a North Pole and a South Pole you get two magnets so you try and surround this in a surface and what you would uh, what you can visualize is that you would have magnetic field lines that are just as many are exiting as are entering that surface. And so when you do the integral B dot dA, it is going to be zero. Okay, so that is Gauss's law for magnetism, a really simple expression. But notice it's interesting 
Just like with Ampere's law, now we have a, a term that depends on changing mag, uh, electric flux. Now we have Gauss's law for magnetism, where we have a, uh, an expression for the electric flux through a surface, or a magnetic flux for, through a surface, rather. And we've now talked about every equation that we uh, have that constitutes Maxwell's equations. So let's write out Maxwell's equations. So we have been working with the integral version of Maxwell's equations. So let's kind of put them all in one spot. So the first thing that we talked about The integral of the electric flux through a surface, through a closed surface, is equal to the, in, uh, the charge enclosed by that surface divided by epsilon naught. This was Gauss's law, and we encountered this way back in uh, chapter 22. Okay, so, and we just talked about the magnetic version of this. I'll try and draw it nice and neat here. That the magnetic flux through a closed surface equals zero. So that's the. I can be happy with my drawing here. That's the um, magnetic version of Gauss's law. Man, I cannot draw an integral sign. All right. Uh. What else do we have? We have, um, so this, and I should say, so this is Gauss's law for magnetism. And this was in chapter 31. Um, the next one we have, E dot DL. Uh, is equal to the derivative of the magnetic flux. So this was Faraday's law. This was a time uh, varying magnetic flux induces uh, an EMF or equivalently an electric field around a surface. And the last one to build up our Maxwell's law was Ampere's law. And this was the one where we just added another term to it. And this was, if we look at the uh, integral of B around a closed surface, uh, or a line integral, um, it's equal to mu naught times the char uh, current enclosed plus mu naught epsilon naught chimes it's equal to uh the, now has two terms the second one so the first one mu naught times i the current in, uh, uh, through the surface and the second one mu naught epsilon naught times the uh, time chain uh, varying electric flux through that surface so and this was really, you know, a combination of chapter 28, and then we added this this uh, this term in chapter 31. And this is it. So this is Maxwell's equations. This is kind of one of the main things that we were building up to uh, in the course. And where we're headed with this is we want to uh, talk about electromagnetic waves, so we can derive electromagnetic uh, waves from this and that's um, that's where we're headed.